most stories are inevitably shelved, relegated to a date, and forgotten. This one is different. Perpetually on Rewind. It's the day life changed forever for Gary Wright. I feel pretty lucky to at least be telling the story. Behind this building is where it all unfolded in 1987. Yeah, it's strange after all these years, you still have shrapnel marks. The debris from the bomb had entered into the cinder block of the building. If only Wright knew. The device I saw was two two by fours um, with nails protruding out of it. One car would have been pulled in here and the other here, and I walked between the two. And it's funny, I bent down like this to pick it up. A bomb exploded behind Cam's Incorporated at 270 East 9th South. 26-year-old Gary Wright pulled into the parking lot and discovered the device. It uh, closed an electrical circuit, and that circuit initiated uh, the uh, explosive material. Basically knocked me back about 22 feet over into this area where I was jumping around like I was on a pogo stick. You started to hear sirens, and it threw, you know, thousands and thousands of just slivers, like needles everywhere. Up under here, it was impaled like a porcupine. As Wright underwent the first of a dozen surgeries, he had no idea why him. Did you just make somebody angry? But the motive is apparently still a mystery, buried in the mind of a dangerous man. It wasn't long before a portrait of the bomber emerged. He was wearing sunglasses, a camouflage sweatshirt, with a hood pulled over his head. A worker spotted the man, leading to an infamous sketch. And they start asking me some questions like, have you ever heard of the Unabomber? The Unabom saga began in the late 70s. Over 17 years, the Unabomber placed and mailed 16 bombs. Three people died, 23 were injured. The bomber was frustrated with modern computerized society and he was striking a blow for humanity in an over-mechanized world. And so that was the tie. My company's name at the time was CAMS, which was an acronym for Computer and Accounting Maintenance Service. After Wright fell victim, the anxiety wouldn't stop. There was this threat that the, he would come back, right? It was kind of like having eyes in the back of your head for a long time. It took me about six years to come to the point where I was figuring out what was I going to do with this? And I started to have this crazy conversation with this voice that I had heard when the bomb went off. You'll be all right. Just great big giant booming voice. Where does it come from? Who knows? Yet forgive and let this go. The FBI has searched the home of Ted Kaczynski in Lincoln, Montana. It was April 3rd, 1996 that marked a turning point. The man reportedly was turned in by a member of his family. I am the guy who turned in his own brother. Ted Kaczynski's brother, David, didn't just show investigators the way to the Unabomber. Yeah, the thing with David was really unexpected. So he just said, look, I call in, I'm David Kaczynski. I want to apologize on behalf of my family for what happened to you. The apology cleared a path for healing and forgiveness. I said, that's a burden, it's not yours. And if you ever need to talk to somebody, middle of the night, if you need to scream, whatever, Give me a call, I'm pretty much a 24-7 guy. Do you do a lot of hills in that, or do you go on flat? Over time, the 24-7 guy became a friend, 365. It's always touching to me, but... Uh, the two even traveled together to share their tale. He said, he said I said, you, uh, you really don't have to carry that. You know, over the course of the years, I mean, we've spent thousands of miles behind a windshield together. I know that we're, you know, this friendship is for life, and we'll be there for each other if, if um, for as long as we're alive. We stay close. It's, uh, it's been a good, good relationship for both of us, I think. 33 years after the bombing, the healing continues. You have to be willing to change yourself in order to move forward. Wright finds peace in nature and exercise. And even when the weather is too cold for cycling, he's still moving. Repetitive motion, the walking, just getting your mind back and starting to feel like things were moving again, it makes a big difference in your life. His journey forward is still being recorded in a story that will forever be remembered for its improbable outcome. Andrew Adams, KSL 5 News.